Thank you, High Representative Joseph uh, Borrell, Excellencies, distinguished guests. Let me start by congratulating our Belgian hosts on their presidency of the European Council. I'm also very pleased to have the opportunity to address this forum again this year. Countries bordering the Indian and Pacific Oceans not only house a significant portion of the world's population, but also account for approximately 60% of the world's GDP. And so they have the potential to wield a significant strategic importance at a time of huge shocks in the geopolitical system. The United Arab Emirates has long been an advocate for dialogue and cooperation. We firmly believe that to address today's challenges, we must double down on establishing long-standing partnerships, building on shared priorities, and fostering international cooperation based on solidarity. And so allow me to focus on three areas where we see the greatest potential for partnership. First, trade and economic cooperation. The UAE sits at the heart of strategic and geographic crossroads, which has allowing for its status as a global trade hub spurred further by policies promoting an environment conducive to investments. Comprehensive economic partnership agreements, such as the ones signed by the UAE with India, Indonesia, and Cambodia, to name a few exemplify the UAE's commitment to fostering international economic ties and modernizing trade by delivering inclusive and sustainable development. We see the broadening of these trade relations, including with the European Union, as absolutely essential in order to reap the full benefits of our existing close trade ties. We are also committed to strengthening economic corridors with our partners from Asia through the Middle East to Europe, improving connectivity routes through initiatives like IMAC, the India Middle East Economic Corridor, serve as the blueprint for increased collaboration and economic prosperity and go hand in hand with, tie, with tighter trade cooperation. The digital economy also brings with it great potential and cannot be ignored, something that the UAE is eager to harness. The digital divide is a reality, and while the Indo-Pacific is the world's fastest growing region for digital connectivity, only around 16% of small and medium enterprises in the region are digitally integrated. The Asian Development Bank estimates that the region would need to invest some 2.3 trillion US dollars in telecommunications in the coming years to ensure that the digital growth and economic growth keep pace. Second, the transition towards a green and sustainable future is a key shared priority. The context of the historic UAE consensus at COP28, countries have agreed to transition away from fossil fuels and towards cleaner sources of energy in a just, orderly, and equitable manner. Notably, countries have agreed to make efforts to triple renewable energy capacities and double energy efficiency by 2030, an objective that has been jointly championed by the EU and the UAE. And while renewable have become the cheapest power in most of the world, we all know closing the energy access gap and realizing a green transition at the same time will necessitate significant efforts. The EU and the Indo-Pacific region will have to remain closely engaged to address the persistent lack of affordable and accessible finance for renewable and to encourage policy frameworks that are conducive to this transition. But despite our best efforts to mitigate the devastating impacts of climate change, we know that many regions are already suffering from climate-induced losses and damages. Pacific small island states uh, are the frontliners of this trend. As key outcomes of COP28, we are proud to have successfully operationalized the Fund for Loss and Damage, crucial in supporting developing countries and rebuilding from the damages caused by climate change. And finally, a secure and stable world are the fundamental 
building blocks of the shared vision of EU Indo-Pacific region. The UE has been advocate for regional peace, tolerance, and constructive dialogue. We remain actively engaged in diplomatic efforts towards de-escalation and addressing conflicts in the region and beyond. Our mutual commitment to fostering prosperity, economic growth, and a green transition all serve the purpose of a more secure world. Recent geopolitical transitions and deterioration of the security environment underscore the, certain, the, the centrality of direct dialogue and collaboration as the primary tools for de-confliction and de-escalation. The UAE, for its part, remains committed to these principles with partners from Europe and Asia. Excellencies, all told, the sky's the limit when it comes to greater cooperation between our regions. I look forward to witnessing the positive impact of our shared endeavors in the days, months, and years to come. Thank you.